Good morning, folks. The sunspots are worth noting today. The filaments are active around the limbs. We have a major science advance in galactic catastrophism, and I'll try to explain it as best I can. Did you miss last night's video? It seems many of those who saw it got exactly what I was hoping for out of the key final statement. I was hoping to see many of you commenting that you agreed, and I was not disappointed. Let's keep it going here. Starting at spaceweathernews.com, we find the last 24 hours on our star were actually somewhat quiet. The limbs are taking filament motions, a great deal. Coronal hole coming in to face Earth. On the south, everything apart from the lead umbra is decaying. You can see the clumping at what was the all-by-itself sunspot. It is set up with alternating magnetism close by which gives it the ability to flare, but C-class range is all it's done thus far. Looking quickly at the solar wind, that is a minor coronal hole stream impacting Earth with plasma speed, only creeping up to about 500 or 550 kilometers per second. Minor geomagnetic instability is all we'll get unless it intensifies further. Let's go into the article starting with yet another anomalous dwarf nova. This one is normally a standstill and outburst star, but its latest eruption displayed shades of something else, and a few anomalies. Those anomalous dwarf nova seem to be coming by the week. Up next, we're going to a story by NASA that needs some checking, unfortunately. First, they blame climate change for contracting the atmosphere and causing more noctilucent clouds. Well, ten years ago, we shared their story about how the weaker sun was collapsing the top of the sky. That's still the better explanation. And as for the noctilucent clouds, their statement about the only explanation is flat wrong. Earth's weakening magnetic field is letting in more space energy, amplifying both photoionization and particle forcing electrification at those layers, attracting the dust and vapor to make the clouds, very similar to the story about polar summer mesospheric echoes. Last but not least, folks, we said it in 2019 when Sophia began marking the magnetic fields in M82. We said it earlier this year when the dipole of the central field was fully realized. And folks, the top astrophysics journal on Earth just said it as well. Just as we often like to show, the field setup is poloidal to toroidal, just like its stars, planets, any sphere magnet really. The fields extend, locked into the outflow galactic wind in the mid-plane. These are open fields, reconnecting like in the solar wind, and that brings the rippling current sheet as well. Folks, the fields are locked into the outflow, driven kinetically just like the solar wind fields, and yes, those galactic magnetic fields are open. Maybe a bit of a complex science when you read the paper, but it's a confirmation of many level details that confirm the galaxy carries the electric current sheet, the galactic magnetic reversal separated by its threaded fields, and the nova triggers that it delivers to a star. Veteran observers, I hope we appreciate the gravity of that story. Wink. I also hope you caught last night's video. It's a major gut check for all observers. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe because we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.